Hello everyone and welcome to the weekend video review for this week with the Black Bears with me, your host, Gary Ryan. And yes, this week with the Black Bears, we are going relatively cheeseless today. All right, it is Sunday, um, February 26th, and yeah, things are kind of tough right now as sometimes they get with many hockey teams. But we're going to do a brief recap of the last few games as the Black Bears have been facing off against the Carolina Thunderbirds. And uh, again, Thunderbirds, one of the top teams in the league. Uh, They are currently just a few points behind the Columbus River Dragons in the Continental Division. But uh, nonetheless, they've been blistering hot. Uh, nine and one in their last 10 games, and they have won 17 of their last 20. Uh, so it's just an incredible, incredible run that they have been on. They have been the model of consistency. And so looking back at this weekend to say we lost a couple of one goal games, one in overtime, um, that's not a bad effort. Um, is it acceptable? No. We want wins. Everybody does. But um, it is what it is. Uh, sometimes you're not going to get everything that you want. <laughs> All right. Friday, uh, we looked at uh, things with eyes wide open and uh, got off to a great start. We had uh, Mac Lewis and Kita Vashkin scoring in the first three minutes, one on the power play. Um, you know, we're happy, we're rolling. Uh, Carolina starts to chip back, but again, early in the second, Tyson Kirkby gets us up three to one, and then the wheels didn't come off. No, uh, we just got outplayed about five minutes in. Carolina returned to their game, which is a very high, uh, high checking game, uh, a, a lot of four checking, uh, a lot of physical presence, very aggressive. Um, they play a, a style of one, three, one, which is, uh, you have your four checker, you have three defensive men standing in the neutral zone, and then you have your trailer D, uh, that really is very frustrating for a lot of skill teams, a lot of uh, quick, fast teams. It's a way of slowing them down and getting their off, them off their game, which it did. Got us off our game. Um, why Carolina didn't play that way in the first period, I don't know. Maybe they still had bus legs from their long travels. Who knows? But nonetheless, um, you know, we basically gave momentum to them. Um, and we came up on the short end of the stick four to three in that opening game. But again, we did not play poorly, uh, just not good enough to win. Um, so then we got to yesterday and there was a lot of craziness, a lot of white noise that went on through the day. A lot of stuff happening behind the scenes, which I'm not going to talk about on here. But uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, it really affected the team early. Uh, they came out flat. You know, they came out of the dressing room just no energy. And Carolina jumped off to a two nothing lead, and suddenly it's like a switch got flipped. And Binghamton said, "Now it's our turn," and they turned it on. And uh, kudos to them. They were missing Ivashkin. They were missing Jurich. They were missing Powell. So 60 goals were out of the lineup Saturday. And yet we found a way of chipping back. Olivieri scores, cuts the lead in half. Chad Lopez scores uh, late in the second, evens us up. Um, Carolina scores on a kind of ridiculous five on three to retake the lead, but then late in the third, Jake Schultz found a way of putting one home. Three power play goals against the top, well, the second leading penalty kill team. Both Carolina and uh, Columbus have power play kill rates of 
mere 88%. That, that, so that means you're only going to score on one out of every eight opportunities given to you. And the fact that coming into this game Saturday, Binghamton put three home on the power play against a team that had only surrendered 26 power play goals all season, phenomenal effort. However, we just didn't generate enough on five on five. And a lot of that is because of what we're missing out of our roster. But it was good to see that special teams play was vastly improved from Friday and that we were able to go toe to toe with Carolina. Even in overtime, there's rushes going this way, rushes going that way. The game is a jumble. It's just nonstop action. And in the end, we came up short. Uh, in the end, there was nothing that Taylor Joseph could do. Uh, wide open goal for uh, for Patuka, uh, Pastuka to put it away. And then all the nonsense happened. And uh, yeah. Cole Parenti on the, uh, on the color commentary said it best. As soon as it started, he said, we need to walk away. We need to walk away. We don't need this. He was right. So today we are looking at sus uh, some suspensions in that whole fracas, which was the entire team versus the entire team. Um, only two suspensions each, I say only because it probably could have been a lot worse. Uh, Matt Bazarin and Mario Cavalier are not available for tonight's game. So Carolina, or this afternoon's game, excuse me. So Carolina is going to have to find an e-bug somewhere uh, to back up Boris Babic. Um, meanwhile, we are without Justin Coachman and JT Walters. So uh, on a team that is already without Jurich, without Avashkin, um, that means all hands on deck. So uh, basically our lineup is, and I'm just saying this in random order. Okay. This, this, I don't think the lines are set in this order. I'm just saying, okay, we got at four Gavin Yates, Josh Newberg, Tyson Kirkby, Mac Lewis, E.T., Everett Thompson. We've got Austin Thompson. We got Brett Parker. We got D'Angelo. And we got Lopez. So it's nine. No extra forward available tonight. Okay. This afternoon. I keep saying tonight. I, I've got Brooks Hill syndrome. Uh, on defense, uh, I'm assuming Kyle Powell is going to return to the lineup to give us uh, uh, a complement of six. We got Jake Schultz, Colin Fitzgerald. Kyle Powell, Matthew Boyard, Don Olivieri, and Cam Yarwood. Now, um, Coach Sherwood may elect to move Fitzgerald up to the forward position in special situations. Um, that has happened before. We'll wait and see what happens. Um, I'm told that McVeigh will not be uh, the backup tonight. Jeremy For uh, Forge is the starter. That It was scheduled that way. And uh, Taylor Joseph will be the backup for tonight. Um, McVeigh has family in town, so I'm assuming that that is probably the reason why he is not going to be dressing for today. Okay, so um, looking at the current standings, this is where we are at, okay, as I talk over the board. Um, Danbury, as you see, has widened their lead over the Black Bears. Um, we, we gained the one point last night in the overtime loss. Uh, Danbury did sweep Port Huron. Um, three, it was four to one and seven to three. So yeah, they've created a little bit of separation. Watertown, uh, they've been uh, steadily climbing. They're up at 48 points now in third place. Uh, Elmira heading in the opposite direction. They're one, seven, and two in their last 10. And then Delaware bringing up the rear. Um, after their uh, brief hot streak, they have once again gone cold and only have one point in their last four contests. A couple of notes I made at the bottom there. Um, Watertown's magic number for playoff spot is now 14 points. Any combination of uh, 14 points gained by Watertown or 14 points lost by Delaware guarantees them a playoff spot. And the Binghamton, Binghamton's magic number to clinch second place, at least, 
is 20 points. Mathematically, Watertown can only reach 99 points, so that's where we're at. I made a note down at the bottom there, uh, Motor City, uh, because of their two wins and Port Huron's two losses, they are now in third place in the Continental Division. So that's the way things look currently as far as the standings go. Obviously, we've got our game today, 3 o'clock. Uh, last chance to see the Black Bears at home before they take their next six games on the road. Uh, they're going to be doing their first week of a Southern Swing. Uh, this week, Wednesday, uh, Mississippi against the Seawolves will be playing them at 8.05. You can catch that game on 1430 Fox Sports Radio, or you can tune in to Mississippi's YouTube video. Um, and then Friday and Saturday, we're taking on the Columbus River Dragons, 7.30 each night. Um, there is one thing to note. And I talked about this about uh, uh, to some length on the podcast uh, on Spotify. There is a 15-game requirement, meaning if you're going to play in the postseason, you need to play in at least 15 contests. Now, most of the team, uh, most of the players on the Black Bears have already met that requirement. Chad Lopez, with uh, his appearance tonight, will reach the 15 mark. Uh, Don Olivieri needs to play in 11 of our remaining 17 games in order to qualify for the playoffs. And then uh, with the two backup goaltenders, Taylor Joseph needs to appear in seven games. And uh, Jeremy Forget needs to appear in eight. Um, yeah, this means a few less starts for McVay as uh, Binghamton really wants to see who's going to step up as the number two. Uh, for the playoffs. And this is a great time to do that. Um, obviously, Forge is getting the start tonight, so he'll draw one game closer. Actually, both both uh, both of the goalies will get one game closer because Joseph is slated as the backup. So um, that will get everything there. And if Jesse Anderson get, decides to come back down the Black Bears after his season with the Make and Mayhem and the SPHL is over, he is also eligible. So That's a nice option to have. Uh, Attendance, we need to average 3,007 fans per game in the remaining seven contests in order to crack 100,000. That is so doable. We can do it. Let's keep supporting our Black Bears. I know things are tough right now. Nobody likes to lose, whether you be a player, a fan, a coach, office staff member. Uh, Everybody loves a winner, right? So um, we... You know, we are still a playoff team. We are still uh, cemented, at least in second place. So let's not go nuts with assigning blame or uh, getting overly critical about our situation. We're still in good shape. Um, Things are tough right now. We're playing a very tough part of our schedule, and we're shorthanded. So it is what it is. You move on, you move forward, and you go out with the goal of winning the next game, winning the next period, winning the next shift. So as long as the Black Bears keep on that focus, we're going to be okay. All right. Um, So, yeah, let's put our focus back on hockey. Um, There's been a lot of nonsense, not just with the Black Bears. Every team yesterday in the league just went through some ridiculous kind of white noise and distraction let's get back to enjoying hockey. Okay. We, we, we turn to hockey as a distraction from all the craziness in life. We don't need to carry that craziness into the game. All right. So let's get back to enjoying what we have, supporting our black bears and cheering them on as they make their push towards the goal of getting the commissioner's cup. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Gary Ryan. Um, You can always find me here. Hit like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Remember, the podcast is on Spotify. Go to Spotify, download the app, and then search for This Week with the Black Bears. We will catch you again tomorrow with some video news and a little bit of a sum up of this afternoon's game. Until then, be excellent to each other. Keep your head up. Keep your stick on the ice. Go Bears.